in this video what I'll do is I'll attempt to answer one of the viewers questions and before I start the question that you asked was definitely very good uh, I should have covered what positive and negative feedback was in one of my videos but I haven't yet because I wanted to keep them a bit shorter but the questions both the questions were quite good which is why I covered them both so the first one was um, what is negative feedback and I'll explain that by comparing negative feedback and positive feedback these two and the second question was what is the feedback mechanism and how much do we need to know about it? And I'll cover that by going through one of the past HC exam questions. I won't cover it in too much detail, but just enough detail for you to be able to appreciate what the feedback mechanism actually was. So in this case, the question was homeostasis consists, consists of two stages. Identify each of these stages and explain how they are related to the feedback mechanism. And that was worth four marks. So I'll start with the first one. What is positive and negative feedback? And I'll start with positive. What's positive feedback? So this is a banana, and bananas ripen. They ripen by themselves. And what actually causes them to ripen is something called ethylene. So ethylene, which is this here, is what causes them to ripen. Don't need to um, remember this, but I use this example to kind of show you what that what that is, what that illustrates. So this is ethylene. And if there's a bit of ethylene, so these purple dots are meant to be ethylene, which can be produced by the banana itself, that causes the banana to ripen. So ethylene itself is the stimulus because it is what causes a change. So the stimulus is ethylene. So what you can imagine, if you would have this banana after a couple of weeks or months, produces a bit of ethylene, what's going to happen is after a short time, it's going to start to ripen. So these brown dots are meant to be the ripening parts. But because ethylene itself is actually a gas, it can also travel. So some of the ethylene molecules will travel. Now they'll travel to the bananas next to it. Now these bananas next to it have a bit more ethylene than they would normally have. The normal levels are very little ethylene. Now they've increased their, their stimulus. So it's these ethylene molecules here with a stimulus. So now that stimulus has been picked up. The banana has realized it's got more ethylene than it's used to have. And in negative feedback, it would make sure it brings that level of ethylene back to normal, normal levels. But in positive feedback, the stimulus is actually increased, so it's enhanced. So instead of actually bringing it back down, it's going to produce even more. So the, what will happen now is this banana will produce lots of ethylene itself because it's picked up the ethylene from its surrounding the stimulus from the surrounding, and it increases production. Instead of bringing it back down to normal, it's increased its demand, which means the bananas will ripen really quickly. Even if they were unripe beforehand, they're going to ripen pretty quickly. So now I'm drawing those brown dots just to show the ripening. And the same thing happens again, because these are gas molecules, they will travel to the next banana, and it will pick up the stimulus, but instead of trying to bring it down, it will actually increase that stimulus, which means it will produce even more and more and more. And again, ripening will happen because of it. So in this case, the response was not to bring down the stimulus. The response was to increase, to try to increase the stimulus. So I'll write increase stimulus. And that's positive feedback. Positive feedback is the idea that if you, if in this case, a banana picks up the stimulus. It doesn't try to keep it at a constant, fine balance level. But once it picks up the stimulus, it actually increases it. So it brings up the production, in this case, the ethylene, to make the ripening faster. That's why we, we shouldn't have, if we have one really ripe banana, put that next to lots of unripe bananas, it will actually make the other bananas ripen even faster. Right? That's, but that's an example of positive feedback. And I'll show you again what negative feedback was. And here, intuition or your, your guess that control of body temperature with negative feedback was correct. Negative feedback is most of our body we do negative feedback. And um, so in this case we have our body temperature here, we've got 39 degrees Celsius, which is a stimulus because again stimulus means that it's, it's not at our normal levels. It's in, more or less than our normal levels. And our normal levels in terms of body temperature is supposed to be 37 degree, degrees Celsius. So what will happen is this receptor We'll always scan around, we'll always check the body temperature. And once it does, it's realized it's at 37, which is too high. 
So what we'll do is the receptor sends a signal from receptor to the brain or the hypothalamus part of the brain, which is the control center. And from there, the hypothalamus decides what to do. In this case, it doesn't want to do positive feedback. Positive feedback would bring it from 39 even higher, would it make it 45 or, or 50, which would obviously mean we would die. In this case, the brain wants to bring it back down to its normal level to control it. And it does it by making a response happen. The response itself is, in this case, sweating or that the blood vessels dilate. The reason why is because these two contr help control it by bringing it back down. The response happens and the body temperature goes back to 37 degrees Celsius. Now everything is good. What will happen is the receptor picks up that change, so that 37 degrees Celsius is picked up. And now the receptor sends a signal back to the hypothalamus. And this new signal tells the hypothalamus that everything's okay. We don't really need to be producing sweat anymore because if we sweat even more, our temperature will go down even further. So that now the brain decides, or hypothalamus decides to go back to those glands and shut off the response. The response stops to make sure it doesn't go down too low. That was negative feedback. Negative feedback is the idea that if you have a stimulus, in this case, our body temperature is too high, that it is controlled by the way of bringing it back down. It will not make it even higher. That would be positive feedback. So boy temperature control is definitely an example of negative feedback. But I still want to go over what exactly that feedback mechanism, what that means. So when a response affects the stimulus, that's feedback, that's the feedback mechanism. So in a response such as sweating or the blood vessels dilating, when that affects the stimulus, such as the temperature is too high, that's what we call the feedback mechanism. This is kind of the relationship between response and the stimulus. In this case, the stimulus was 39 degrees Celsius, and the, stim and the response was that we start sweating and our blood vessels dilate, and that was done to bring it back down. So because the response helps bring down the stimulus, that is a feedback mechanism. And once it's at that final stage where it's perfect, the new signal will make sure that the actual response stops. All that is part of the feedback mechanism to try to actually maintain a balance. But there's two different types. As we said, it was positive and there is negative. Positive was the example of the ripening and negative was the example of body temp. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a couple of different things that happen in our body that have to be controlled, such as temperature, pH, blood clotting, and salt and water balance. And I'll go over each of those and say, you know, is it a example of positive feedback or negative feedback? As we mentioned earlier, temperature was definitely negative feedback because it's trying to balance it and control it in a fine area. If it's too high, we, our enzymes would stop functioning. Our pH is also an example of negative, so N for negative. The reason why, again, our enzymes don't work, have their optimum level. If we bring it too low or too high, then we would our enzymes would stop working. So if the pH were, that, for example, if the stimulus were that our pH is now at 9, which is too high, if the response were to bring it even higher, then our enzymes would even be working less efficiently. So pH, the balance of pH is definitely negative because we try to keep it at a fine balance. There's blood clotting. Blood clotting is actually an example of a positive feedback because in this case, if you have, let's say this is a cell, and this cell is close to a wound, a wound that got cut, what it will do is it will, it will send out a chemical so I'm going to draw this chemical. So now this wound has been, I'm going to make it a bit red because it means it just got cut somewhere close to that cell. And it will send a chemical, this yellow chemical. And it, it will send this chemical to the platelets. And the platelets help to repair, to make blood clotting happen and to repair the wound. But as soon as this platelet has actually reached, has gotten this chemical, it will produce even more of that chemical. And the reason why is because then you have more and more platelets. There will be more platelets around that get these new chemicals. And once one of the platelets picks up that chemical, it will produce more of that chemical to get even more of the platelets involved. And that will mean they can all help to fix that wound. Right? So blood clotting is an example of positive feedback. Salt and water balance, that's not an example of negative feedback. Again, we want to keep a very fine balance of our salt and water levels. And we achieve that 
by removing too much water or too much salt if you have um, too much of it, or conserving if you have too little of it. And that was an example of negative feedback. So now I'll go over that exam question as well. Again, I'm going to cover it only in some detail. I will actually make um, exam question videos in the near future, but this one just it's just there to help you answer that question. So it says that homeostasis consists of two stages. The stages were detect and response. Identify just means we have to be able to name them or say what they are. So detect was here. The receptors detect that change. And the response was here when our sweating and our blood vessels dilating helped us bring it back down to 37 degrees Celsius. So these were the identified. So it's worth four marks. If you, do, if you name them those two, you already get two marks. And what you can still write is this here. This is kind of answering the second part, which is and explain how they're related to the feedback mechanism. Being able to detect and respond to a stimulus allows the body to control its internal environment. And so negative feedback was all about trying to maintain its internal environment. And when we actually have a stimulus and we can respond to it, that means we can bring it back down. And obviously, if we want to be able to respond to it, the first thing we have to do is be able to detect it. As the detection and response are all really linked to that feedback mechanism, the idea to bring it back down. Because if there were no response or detection stage, we wouldn't be able to control our internal environment. We wouldn't be able to keep it constant. And then you can say, once the ID levels are reached, another signal is sent to stop the response. That was, again, that was the idea that, you know, if now we're at 37 degrees Celsius, and we send that signal to the hypothalamus to stop the response, because otherwise we would go even we would, we would go too low. We would um, not freeze to death, but our temperature would drop too low, and we would have problems again. Right. So those two and the detection response part would allow us to answer that question. When it comes to feedback mechanisms, you need to know for your exams. You need to be able to remember the temperature one, because that's actually a one that you could be asked to show. But the feedback mechanism is quite general. So it can be due with temperature, pH, blood clotting, or salt and water balance. But when it comes to exams, you won't be asked to draw a diagram of the pH or the blood clotting one or the salt and water one, but you might be asked to draw a diagram of the temperature one. Just because there's a syllabus dot point that which says draw one, more or less. So I hope that was useful. And um, thank you for the question. That was a very good question. And if you have any other questions, just feel free to leave that question on the comments and I'll try to respond to it or someone else might try to respond to it as soon as possible. Hope that was useful.